My name is Russell Wasserfall. I am a food photographer and writer, and I've been working for the last two years on a book about the food and wines of the Western Cape with a publishing company in Norway called Pepper Publishing. And I started working, and it's turned into one of the most incredible projects that I've ever done because I was allowed to express myself both as a writer and as a photographer in the pages of these books. For most tourists, the experience of visiting South Africa is to come to the Western Cape and, and they've heard about Nelson Mandela, so they go and visit Robben Island, or they go shopping in the shopping precinct to the V&A waterfront, they go up Table Mountain in a, a cable car, but there is just so much more. And in particular for the traveler who's looking to eat well, um, the Western Cape offers an absolute shopping basket of experiences. Within two hours drive of Cape Town city center, there are 600 wine estates. Some of them historic, dating back as far as 300 years and producing wines that are gracing the tables of, of fine restaurants the world over. Because of the, the produce that we, we have available, because of the skills of the local chefs, and in particular because of the visiting of international chefs who are now starting to see the Western Cape as a draw card for them. We have restaurants that rival some of the best in Europe. And we have people like Luke Dale Roberts. In 2013, he was voted one to watch on the San Pellegrino um, Awards calendar. The local awards for the best restaurant in the country is known as the Eat Out Awards. For a number of years, other provinces or other regions of South Africa have been complaining because as many as eight or nine Western Cape restaurants feature in the top 10 restaurants of the country. And typically you can eat a meal that might cost you at a Michelin star or two Michelin star restaurant in Europe, it might cost you 500 euros. You could eat the same quality and caliber of meal for as little as 50 euro, 100 euro perhaps. Very often visitors to this country, particularly those who understand and know food and the wine industry, look at a menu and shake their heads and cannot believe how little it costs to eat extremely good cuisine in this country. And I mean that from the perspective of fine dining, but fine dining is not everyone's cup of tea. I mean, you can walk into five, six, seven burger bars in the center of Cape Town and eat an incredible burger that you'll have for 20 or 25% of the, of, of the cost of the best burger you will eat in Oslo, for argument's sake, or um, in Copenhagen. Since its earliest beginnings the, um, in the Cape Colony 300, 400 years ago, South Africa has exported wine to Europe. And it has been an industry that's been growing rapidly since the 60s and 70s in this country. And it is possible to find in many of the world's capitals someone who is selling South African wines. But with the emergence of more and more new world wines onto the market, South African winemakers have become aware of the competitive nature of the industry and have raised their game to meet with the expectations of an international market. So you can either come here to experience the farms and the winemaking of those farmers and winemakers, or um, find South African wines in a local store near you. Part of the experience of visiting South Africa, and in particular the Western Cape, is to do wine tours, to visit the various estates where these incredible wines are made. It's also amazing to many visitors that these tastings are offered by many of the wine farms for free, or at least for a very small amount of money. For, for 20 rand, which is two or three euro, you can taste a selection of eight wines at particular states. The experience of wine to be have, had here is as incredible as the experience of restaurants. Cape Town is dominated by a massive feature, the kilometer high Table Mountain, which has now been declared a World Heritage Site and one of the wonders, of the natural wonders of the world. There, are, there is so much to do around Cape Town in terms of walking, hiking. Um, because we have such incredible weather, there's a very, very active outdoor sport community in the city and people can come here and mountain bike and hike and paraglide and sail. From its very earliest beginnings, when it was established as a, 
a reprovisioning station for European ships, particularly Dutch ships, on their way to the spice wealth of the east. They would stop in Cape Town, drop a few guys off, say, listen, grow us some things, and we'll come by every now and again and fetch it. So from its very earliest beginnings, it was about food. And as different colonial powers took hold here, and as various influences and people moved in, we have a total melting pot, a, 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 a sort of a bubbling cauldron of food experience here. So the Portuguese influence is here, the English influence is here, the Dutch influence is here, and it goes on and on. But then the, there are also influences like Malay and the Cape Malay, the Indian influence of, of later imports and later cultures that came to South Africa. You can walk down a city street in Cape Town and eat something like a curried mince roti or a bunny chow which has uh, curry in it. You can eat something like fish and chips which is extremely popular with the locals. Your hot dog, burrowvors, burger, the fast food culture of the planet is truly and fully represented here. In the restaurants something more refined. The influx of international chefs and those chefs from South Africa who have joined the increasing move of young professionals to go abroad, train, get some experience and come back. A lot of these youngsters, these young chefs have brought back amazing skills and a determination to showcase the produce and the, the skills and techniques of the region. The Western Cape Food and Wine Project um, found its expression first in a book, but it's grown into a much larger thing. It took a life of its own um, and it is now published in three parts. Um, a guide to the, the tourism highlights and hotspots of the Western Cape, a guide to the wine farms, many of the, the, the best wine farms of the region, and a guide to the restaurants and the eating experiences. This is going to be published in an ebook format and it runs to over 800 pages, which I'm extremely proud to say I've had a hand in contributing to.